it couldn't have been. This hunt might have been one of my favorite hunts of all time. Now it's really all I want to do because I mean I used to be in the ocean a lot, used to do a lot of surfing, being a lot outside, doing a lot of, let's say, physical activities. And due to my injuries, I just can't anymore. And I don't know. It's just like you want to you want to give something back because you know, you know, we we have no understanding of what actually goes on or how actually bad it is or what, you know, honestly, how much it affects their life for the rest of their life. We were almost to Beggs, Oklahoma. That's where Repent Charlie O'Brien's at. Right in half a mile. Half a mile. It's uh, 20 minutes to late. We told him we'd meet him at the gate at eight o'clock. Dwight's coming all the way up here to help with this hunt. We're, uh, we're taking on. Uh, can't tell you his name. He's Not sure I got his right name. Turns light right. But, uh, US 75 all. We've gotten involved with them guys. and His dream is to kill a really big deer. So we're going to try to make it happen for him. Charlie's opened up the, now turns light right. the ranch. And I'll tell you right up front, this is a... Uh, most of it's a high fence operation. In 800 feet, turn left. Now, I ain't gonna be able to show him for obvious reasons, he's still active. What I'm gonna try to do is shoot him from the waist down and film the whole event. Now, it may work and it may not, but uh, we'll just, we'll see. Nothing better than a gate opening buddy. I love it. That's not Mississippi weather out there, brother. <laughs> Jeez. This is a rarity. This is something that you don't ever see. Uh, Mr. Cuz Strickland has released the steering wheel and the brake pedal and the gas pedal to somebody else. And uh, that is just does not exist in the Cuz 411 world at all. No texting and driving, ever. So anyway, I had to do some stuff. We're on the way to the airport. We went to the Catch-22, hooked up with Charlie, and got all that out of the way. We're on our way to pick up our Navy SEAL. The low forecast for tomorrow morning is 15. So I, I called our Navy SEAL, told him the weather forecast, and he said, I'll bring an extra pair of underwear. I don't think cold weather bothers me. I doubt it does. Anyway, on the way to the airport, we'll uh, check back in. Our man's flight came in on time <clears throat> and that's good because they were predicting freeze and drizzle and all that you never know but uh, we've made all the uh, runs for supplies all we got to do is get him out to introduce him to Charlie and the other guys and we're about to head to hunting camp what's your plan Charlie oh mm, we're gonna go here and see what happens I guess see what happens What's the weather gonna do today? It's getting freezing cold. Freezing, yeah. I don't know. It's gonna be shoot. Supposed to get down in the twenties, low twenties. It'll be the coldest day of the year so far. So hopefully it'll make them deer get up and move around, or cool. it could just freeze a fire at them and they can just get locked up. But I think we'll see something tonight. All right. We normally do. In 2007, I was uh, in Iraq, was blown up and uh, buried by a two-story concrete building. I actually lost one of my EOD guys that night. And yeah, it was, you know, I was pretty much, they actually passed me over because they were doing triage and they thought I was pretty much, I was dead. So they passed me over to go help some other people and I kind of brought, came back to life and uh, was basically medevaced out of there just spent about a week in ICU. I think they called my wife telling her they're probably not even gonna make it through the night. And then we got finally got back to the hospital in the States because I was pretty much too unstable to fly back. And 
spent uh, about a month and a half in the hospital bed and kind of got myself injuries were basically from the head down obviously there was a, a major brain injury um, I had my or left orbital socket was blown out my eye was basically out all kinds of lacerations on my face broken nose had a collapsed lung some fractured vertebrae pelvis was broken half um, and then down on my foot I had a bunch of broken bones in my foot so kind of got myself all healed back up and made the next deployment. Did not miss a deployment. Did not miss a deployment. You want me to put that one out of his misery? No. Now this is what I love to watch, is this right here. Is that two years old? Yeah. Okay, the first hunt is done. And uh, we saw a uh, small buck and spike off six or eight does but Charlie had two people out looking in a field about a half a mile away they saw the big deer that uh, we're kind of looking for so anyway it was a good night we're back at the catch 22 Charlie's Lodge and we're about to start what they're calling steak off I brought Dwight Griffin with me who's legendary at home for cooking steaks and Bert LaBeouf is here from Louisiana, and he brought his steaks that have been marinating for three days in a Ziploc bag, and he's from Louisiana, so it's, uh, it ain't looking good for Dwight, but we'll just have to wait and see, so anyway, as the steak off continues, Big John and our Navy SEAL friend said there has to be consequences for the loser, we hadn't determined that yet, but anyway, tonight... Bert LaBeouf from Louisiana is cooking steaks Friday night. Dwight cooks his, so that's the steak off thing. Charlie, if we're going to have a, a food contest, red meat's right up your alley. That's like home. That's, like that's right it. down the middle. Right down the middle for me. That's like hitting a home run. We're, shoot, we got it. New York strip to me, which is my favorite steak, and we got baked potatoes, cream corn, salad, and... Uh, Texas toast. That's your death row meal there. That's it. That's, that is. That's the <laughs> last supper. <laughs>